Okay, so just uh, first of all, very uh, grateful for this opportunity to be back at uh, my alma mater and just grateful to Coach Kalani for uh, giving me this opportunity and man, just excited to be back and be able to help in, in any way I can to be able to uh, shoot, go into the Big 12 and help us start uh, competing and winning conference championships. And that's what, you know, this place has been known for for a really long time and just excited to get back to that. And uh, yeah, just excited about this role that he's given me and uh, just, you know, I walked into the office this morning for the first time and just felt like, felt like home, felt like I was uh, back where I should be. And so, yeah, just very grateful and uh, excited about getting, uh, getting things rolling here. We'll start with questions from Mitch and then Jared. Hey, Kelly, welcome back uh, to BYU and Bravo. Good to talk with you again. Uh, you know, when you're breaking up conference championships, I'm curious, you know, you've seen both sides of it as a player at BYU and as a coach in those early days of independence. What value just simply comes from having the goal of pursuing a conference title for a program? Yeah, no, that, that honestly was one of the biggest things going from uh, coming from here, going to Virginia and just being in a conference again. It was the biggest thing that stood out to me was just week in and week out you were playing for that conference championship. And shoot, even at times where you had one or two losses, every game meant something still because you never knew what was going to happen, you know, throughout the conference. And I think every year but our first year there, we were in the conference hunt, you know, being able to have a chance to win our division and being able to play in that conference championship. And so that was exciting. Every single week you knew that you were going to be out there, you're playing for something real because you were trying to get, you know, get to that conference championship game. And so that was fun. And to be able to experience that for six years, you know, in the ACC at Virginia and then, you know, this past season, obviously at Boise State, we had a ton of success playing the conference championship game. It's just, there's just something more than, uh, you know, when you're independent, it's kind of like you're playing for your pride and, you know, each and every week you're playing uh, great opponents, but it ultimately, uh, there was no conference championship there that you could really, yeah, you know, be able to compete for. And so this is a this is a different deal, man. And I'm excited for us to be back in this, you know, opportunity to compete for conference championships. And I look back to my time as a player and uh, being able to compete for those Mountain West Conference championships and being on the last two teams that won conference championships in '06 and '07. Uh, man, those are those are fond fond memories for me, and uh, just look forward to you know creating more of those memories coming uh, going forward here. Well, I talk about the decision to return, and also, what do you feel like you gained during the time since your last stint here in Provo? Oh man, gained so much. I would. Just, that's where I'm going to start. Is just, it's uh, it was really hard to leave uh, seven years ago, and uh, going to a Power Five conference and being able to learn how uh, the rigors of recruiting. That was probably the biggest thing that I re that I learned over the you know over the past seven well six years there at Virginia and then seven years of you know my seventh year at Boise State. But just understanding the process of recruiting at a Power, power Five level and the time that it's going to take and the recruiting battles that you're going to have to have to be able to get great recruits. And uh, you know here at BYU over my time my you know seven years I was here before. Um, you know, you're only recruiting a handful of guys. Um, you get to Virginia and it's competitive, you know, in the ACC and you're fighting with, you know, these SEC schools and Big 12 schools. You're all fighting over these same guys. And those were those were fun battles to have. And so just being able to experience that and understanding what that's going to take. And we're going into that level of recruiting now that we're going to have to we're going to have to be in those battles. And if we're not, we're not going to be getting, you know, the, the right player, I believe, that we're going to need to help win conference championships. And so, um, yeah, so that would that would probably be my biggest takeaway over the past you know seven years of being away of just the recruiting that we're going to have to be able to be involved in to be able to be competitive. Jake and then Jay. Yeah, Kelly, I going back to what you were talking about with your recruiting uh, note is that you guys are going into new I guess recruiting territory, the Midwest, the South, even into Florida on the East Coast. With your experience having to go to Virginia and have to kind of break new ground there. Huh? Help you guys as you transition to the Big 12 now? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, one of the, the main things that, you know, I hope to bring in the area that we really need to get into is Atlanta. You know, Atlanta is a, um, it's a hotbed. There's a ton of talent. Um, really, shoot, everybody in the country recruits there, but there's enough players for everybody. I mean, just being able to, uh, 
recruit there you know when my time at Virginia even this last year at Boise State we were recruiting there and and I uh, had some opportunities to recruit some guys but uh, you know I think Atlanta is an is a great spot there's a direct flight from Atlanta to Salt Lake an easy flight and uh, you know I think that makes it a lot easier to be able to recruit guys from there and there's connections I have a ton of connections that I've made over the years and uh, those kids are willing to travel and they want to play big time college football and uh, I don't think it matters for those kids where they I mean shoot a lot of those kids are going to Minnesota so I'm thinking, okay, Minnesota's grabbing guys from Atlanta. We can, we can for sure take some guys too as well. And so, um, just excited to be able to, you know, bring that, you know, area recruiting into into BYU. And I know they've been out there before. There's been, you know, kids that we've recruited out of that area even back when I was here seven years ago. So I I do believe that can be a great spot for us. Hey Kelly, uh, welcome back. Um, just uh, curious of how quickly this all came, kind of unfolded. Did, uh, did you have an inkling when BYU visited on November 5th at Boise that, that this might happen? Just kind of, <laughs> can you take us through a little bit of the process? It, it happened fast, man. It happened quick. And so, you know, I know, um, you know, last week, mo a lot of things happened, you know, that, that week right after the regular season. And for me, just being in that conference championship game in the Mountain West last week made it a little bit different. And so I know that, um, there was some conversation that was wanting to happen earlier in the week, and uh, I really wanted to give all my attention and uh, energy to that team last week. And so, really, as soon as the game was over, uh, you know, I know Coach Avalos and uh, Kalani had talked and uh, gave me permission to talk after the game. And Kalani and I got on the phone and and talked and and uh, yeah, there was there was an offer, and and uh, you know, my wife and I had to make a quick decision and. Uh, and shoot, yeah, it was uh, shoot that night, Saturday night. Everything kind of went down where I told Kalani this is this is where I wanted to be, and uh, you know I had to call Coach Avalos that night, same night and let him know that I was going to take this opportunity. I thought it was best for me and my family, and uh, then that morning was calling all the Sunday morning was calling all my players that you know at Boise State and telling them that I was going to take this job. And so um, it happened quick, it happened really quick. But uh, I do believe it's. Uh, a great opportunity uh, for me and my family. And I just, I'm really, really excited about all the things that I've learned over the past seven years to be able to come back and apply some of those things um, to here. And uh, it's really been the best thing for my life and for my career to be able to get away. And uh, just the things I've learned over the past seven years, I, you know, I'm really excited to be able to bring that to the table here at BYU and be able to help us uh, continue to, take steps forward. And like I said, the ultimate goal is to win conference championships. So that's that's my ultimate goal is to help us do that. Arnell and then Mitch. Hey, Kelly, what was your previous relationship with Kalani and with Jay Hill, if, if any? Um, I don't believe you coached with either of those guys. So what, what was your previous relationship? Yeah, with, really just, yeah, really just through recruiting and, you know, seeing each other on the road and, uh, that that was about it, really, with uh, Coach Hill. Not much even at all with that. I, I had run into him maybe a couple times, said hello, maybe at a convention, um, but really never had a you know sit down conversation. Where with Kalani, I remember sitting down with him at a couple all poly camps and sitting there and and talking. And then, honestly, really over the last couple you know two or three years, just staying in contact with him. You know, in the coaching profession, you know, always got to keep those networks open. And I never knew what opportunity you know would come here, but um, I thought it was always good just to stay in contact with you know as many coaches as I could just when opportunities came that you know shoot at least somebody would you know give me an interview that you know my, my name would be on their mind and so uh, sure enough when the opportunity came you know this time around it just the timing was right for me to be able to get back here and and so really like you know like you said never coached with either of them before but have always wanted to you know learn from them and learn you know this defensive scheme that has been so successful over the years and just seeing the success that Jay had at Utah and at Weber State and you know obviously the success Kalani's had you know throughout his career not just at Utah but here as well and excited to learn from those guys and anxious to shoot to get to work and uh, get things rolling here. You're in your uh, first week back, Kelly. Uh, maybe what stands out is, is some of the uh, initial big changes that you've seen with the program compared to those early years when you were here in Independence. <laughs> well, I just got in this morning, man. So I, you know, I, I don't know. I haven't been around the team at all yet. 
So, you know, anxious to get around the team and uh, be able to just see the culture of the team and how everything, uh, you know, goes that way. But, you know, the main thing for me, like I said this morning, when I walked in uh, the building, it just felt it felt right. And it felt like home and it felt like I'd never left. Honestly, it felt like I was just I drove up this morning, parked in the same spot I, I used to park seven years ago and walked into the building. And it just felt it just felt good, man. And, uh, you know, I think that's the thing that's. Uh, great about BYU is, you know, there's amazing people here and they, uh, you know, are aligned with the university. And, um, you know, I don't think it really matters who's in charge. Yeah, I think, you know, everybody is, you know, on board to hold a high standard here. And just that's really the main thing that I've noticed as I'm just going around today is there's a, there is a standard that is held here. And, you know, I know Coach, you know, Kalani's done a great job of uh, wanting to get, you know, competing for that high standard that's been established here over the years. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm excited to, you know, be able to help us hold that high standard of winning here and, um, you know, be able to just buy into the, his culture and his way of doing things. That's what I'm, you know, I'm even more excited about is just to learn that and just get rolling on, you know, exactly what he wants done. And I'm fired up to, you know, be a part of it. So. Jake and then Sean. Yeah, Kelly, correct me if I'm wrong on the timeline here, but you were mainly a linebackers coach your first in here at BYU. You've been started to get into special teams later on during that time. And you since become a special teams coordinator, co-defensive coordinator. Uh, I, I'm asking about specifically about special teams. What, what, what interests you about that facet of the game, and why have you taken on such an outsized role with the other staffs you've been on with that? Yeah, I think it's just the the experience that I've had since I was here. You know, I think it was after my second or third year of being a full time coach here. You know, Coach Mendenhall asked me to be the the special teams coordinator. So I think it was my last three years here. I was the special teams coordinator here. And then my first two years at Virginia, I was the special teams coordinator. And then the last four uh, years at Virginia, I was co-defensive coordinator. And then uh, this past season, I was a co-special teams uh, coordinator with uh, Keith Bonifa up there, which was awesome. That was a great experience. But, uh, you know, I just I, I just love the game. I think the thing I love most about special teams is it's it's the time when the whole team comes together. It's when the offensive side and the defensive guys, you know, side comes together and they're on the field at one time together. And it's really, I believe, it's the heart of the team. And, you know, I'm excited to be able to build that culture here of, you know, just how um, we've done it over the years. And I think it's going to blend great with which uh, with what Kalani wants. And, you know, they've they've played really good special teams here as well. But it's just the purest form of football, man. It's freaking tackling and it's blocking and, uh, you know, being able to run and tackle and block and, you know, get some great returners out there that can make some plays and change the game. And and, uh, you know, just excited about that opportunity and and, uh, you know, love, obviously love defense and, uh, you know, coaching linebackers, coaching the edge guys. So whatever role I end up having there, I'll be fired up for that as well. But, uh, yeah, just ultimately I love special teams because I, I believe it brings the whole team together. And that's that's the heart of our team. Hey, K-Pop, let me uh, add my voice to say welcome back to uh, Provo. You look good in blue again. Um, Appreciate it. But, uh, Yesterday when we were talking to Jay a little bit, he, he talked about you and he mentioned you specifically as a player, how you really struck, kind of stuck out to him as a player and he sort of followed your career a little bit since then. How, how do you feel like your sort of coaching style will fit in a, not just under Kalani, but in the Jay Hill system in particular as a defense assistant? Yeah, so I, I think it's super simple, man, is uh, just the conversations that I have with Coach Hill, because we didn't know each other, really. We started talking on Sunday and uh, just kind of getting to know each other. And, uh, you know, the, th the words that he was using are the same words that I've been, you know, that I grew up in in this profession, you know, accountability, discipline toughness um, those are the things that he's wanting to instill in this in this defense and those are things that I've been taught from the very beginning and uh, you know I think we're aligned in a lot of ways with that and uh, you know I know that he um, he's always had tough uh, tough teams physical teams and uh, I know that we're going to establish that and where it's going to start and both of us are in accordance with this it's going to start practice so the way that we practice and the way that we go about establishing that physicality and that toughness, that accountability, that discipline, it starts, it starts in practice. Because if we never do it in practice, man, that, that's never going to translate to the game. And so, um, yeah, we're excited to get that, get that rolling here, man. And it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun, uh, fun challenge for us. Jay and then Greg. Yeah, Kelly, you already answered partially. I was going to ask about what 
defensive position you took, and it sounds like that hasn't been set yet. Um, and then my other question is, who's running the special teams right now with you only arriving this morning and uh, Ed obviously moving on? Uh, who's kind of in charge of those guys as they prepare for the bowl game? Yeah, I think for right now, uh, Gavin Fowler will be um, be dealing uh, with those guys. He's somebody that's worked with Ed in the past, and so I know he has a good relationship with those guys. We've talked briefly, Gavin and I, about that, and so um, he'll be um, he'll be with those guys through the bowl game. Greg, go ahead. You coached uh, against BYU each of the last two seasons. Uh, what were your impressions of the BYU program you've coached against, and what do you think you'll be able to build on with this team that you already know about BYU from what you've seen? Yeah, so I just want to make it clear. No time in my career I wanted to beat a team more than those two games. Okay, So number one, that was the bottom line. I wanted to beat them bad. But uh, with that being said, um, I just, man, I really respect it. Because, you know, I didn't really look much at the defense at the time, you know, just right. be, just facing the offense. But, man, just really respect A-Rod and, and, and Fessy and that whole, that whole staff of what they've been able to accomplish. Man, not just the past two years, but three, four years that they've been uh, just rolling on offense. And it's a difficult, difficult scheme uh, to defend. And uh, they've done a great job just being able to be balanced, being able to throw the ball down the field and being able to run the football and just you know being able to be a balanced attack is the hardest thing to defend and so i really respect those guys and they do a great job and you know that's really the main thing that i've just seen from them shoot the old line is big and strong and physical and then you got these big tall receivers on the outside and good tight ends and you know running backs that run the ball hard and then quarterbacks that are i mean it just they're balanced everywhere and so it's just that's a really hard uh, scheme to attack defensively when you just got balanced and then you got guys everywhere to contribute the ball and so um, it's a challenge and so I'm glad I'm glad I'm on their side now that I don't have to defend against it but um, it'll be fun to be able to go against those guys in practice and learn and grow that way but uh, just man or just and also just really respect you know coach Kalani and the way that he's done uh, you know built his culture here which is um, you know really different from the way that I was here in you know a lot of ways but very similar in a lot of ways and so just uh, anxious to continue to learn and grow from him and just seeing how he's built you know this winning tradition that he's done over the past seven years one quick follow-up how do you describe the grind of a p5 schedule who you know it honestly the thing that I think is uh, um, for BYU that's a positive is really the last couple of years they've been pretty dang close to a p5 schedule and so but it's just week after week there's no there's no time to take a breath and be like oh we got you know this FCS team or maybe this lower mid-major team to be able to play this week it's week after week for nine weeks uh, a really really good opponent and so um, just the preparation that's going to take um, to be able to be consistent is, uh, yeah, it's going to be different than, uh, you know, what this program's, you know, had to experience over the last couple of years. But, you know, like I said, I think different from what I tell everybody, it's different from what when Utah, you know, went into the Pac-12, you know, they went straight from the Mountain West to the Pac-12, where I think this independence has been a little bit of a, um, you know, it's been different because, shoot, they're playing, you know, six or seven uh, P5 teams a year. Which uh, I think has gotten us ready and well prepared for you know the uh, the schedule that we're going to have next year. So that's exciting, and I think I don't think it's going to be a huge adjustment going from you know six or seven P five teams to you know eight or nine. You know, having two more, it'll be different for sure. But it's just going to be the consistency of great opponents week after week after week that we're going to have to get ready for, and our guys are going to have to you know they're going to have to learn to know how to recover better. They're going to have to learn how to prepare better. Um, you know, week after week, and just uh, and the fun part about it too that I always like about conference play is every year you know you you get to replay these teams again you know and that's the, I think one of the hard things about independence is like every year the schedule is different and you're preparing now there's going to be familiarity you know year after year after year playing these similar teams which is fun and uh, you get to know you know those coaches better you get to know their schemes you get to know their players and uh, yeah that's I think that's a real fun part of being part of a conference. Thanks and welcome back. Yeah thank you. Mitch, go ahead. Yeah, Kelly, I uh, just wanted to see if maybe you keep in touch with Coach Mendenhall and if he's had the chance to maybe reach out to you and 
if he congratulate you on, on returning to BYU if you keep up with the coach. Oh, yeah. I have, I've had more conversation with Coach Menhall over the past four months than I ever have, maybe in the last 12. But he's, uh, yeah, he's been a huge fan of just following not just myself, but all the other coaches that he worked with throughout the years and just keeping uh, in touch with us and giving us advice and mentoring us along the way. And he's been awesome, man. And he's just, uh, you know, I've had great conversations with him of just, you know, coming back here and, you know, expertise expectations and just you know things to be ready for and all things that I knew uh, but just kind of reminders of just yeah, you know the pros and cons and every place has pros and cons but just he was really excited when he heard really excited for me and my family and uh, he's just excited to uh, you know continue to follow me and uh, you know all the other coaches that he's uh, coached with over the years we'll take last question from Jake yeah Kelly I, I similar to Mitch's question uh, you're the first on-field assistant to the left with Bronco to come back. I know Patrick Hickman and Justin Anderson have come back in that player personnel roles yeah. at their end. How does it feel to be that, I guess, almost in a way, the prodigal son returning hmm. to Provo? Honestly, <laughs> I don't look at it that way, man. I just, I yeah. just, I'm just, just excited, honestly, to be back here, man. And I, I was hoping for the opportunity to come one day. Um, you know, I didn't know it was going to happen, you know, seven years after leaving. I thought maybe, shoot, 10, 15 years down the road, the opportunity might come. But, uh, you know, BYU is, is, shoot, it's who I am, man. It's, uh, you know, I grew up, you know, going, my dad taking me and my brothers to games since I was, you know, a little kid and, and playing, being able to play here and then being able to coach here. And I shoot, my first three kids were born while I was coaching here. And so they're, they're fired up to get back and kind of remember what it's like to be going to games here at BYU. And so it's just, it's just who I am, man, and it's just uh, it's exciting to be back and be able to contribute and be able to help in any way possible to just help this team continue to progress and grow to now get into the Big 12 and, like I continue to say, just help us compete for conference championships. What's the first food you're going to have coming back? <laughs> the, fir the first what? Like, you've been away from Utah for a while, so like, is there a restaurant you've been missing more than others? Oh, man. I don't know, man. There's this really great Italian place downtown Provo that I've been craving forever, man. So that's probably where I'm going to hit up maybe later tonight if I get some time. So I think it's called like La Dolce Vita or something like that. You guys, yeah, yeah that's, that, that, that's, that's the spot right there. So I'm Italian, so just any good Italian food, man. That's what I'm ready for. Welcome back. Thanks. Thanks, guys.